Born as Hermes Joseph Asgadam on August 15, 1985, he grew up in the Crenshaw District of South Central Los Angeles. Nipsey had a pretty unique family background. His mom, Angelique Smith, was African-American, and his dad, DeWitt Asgadam, was an Eritrean war refugee who had fled the ongoing Eritrean War of Independence to make a new life in the United States. Excuse me if I didn't pronounce all of that correctly. Nipsey was raised alongside his brother, Samuel, or Black Sam, and his sister, Samantha. He went to Alexander Hamilton High School, but school life wasn't his jam, and he dropped out before graduating. Now, here's where the story gets interesting. At just 14 years old, Nipsey made a fateful decision. He joined the local Roland 60s neighborhood Crips, which was a part of the larger Crips gang, mainly rooted in his home turf of Crenshaw. In 2002, when he was only 17, Nipsey got involved with Buttervision, a creative multimedia movement led by Dexter Brown. During this time, he contributed to projects like the BV Boy Sampler, Beats and Babes Volume 1 DVD, and Shades of Butter Volume 1 DVD. It was here that he picked up the name Nipsey Hustle and started working on his debut mixtape, Slawson Boy Volume 1. Now, the name Nipsey Hustle actually comes from a childhood friend who saw Nipsey's strong work ethic and determination. It was a nod to the comedian and game show panelist Nipsey Russell. In 2004, when he was 19, his dad took him and his brother on a three-month trip to Eritrea, his father's home country. This trip turned out to be a life-changing experience. It inspired Nipsey to become not just a rapper, but a community activist with a real entrepreneurial spirit. It was the spark that ignited his incredible journey from the streets of South Central Los Angeles to worldwide fame. All right, now let's talk about his journey in the music world. Back in December 2005, Nipsey independently dropped his first mixtape, Slauson Boy, Volume 1. It wasn't an instant hit, but it laid the foundation for a growing local fan base on the West Coast. Soon his talent caught the attention of record labels, and he got signed to Cinematic Music Group and Epic Records. In 2008, Nipsey released the first two parts of his Bullets Ain't Got No Name mixtape series. These mixtapes expanded his reach and introduced his music to a broader audience. But the big breakthrough was still on the horizon. Nipsey's profile took off in 2009 when he teamed up with Drake for the song Killer. He also collaborated with the likes of Snoop Dogg and Problem on Upside Down from Snoop Dogg's album Malice in Wonderland. Nipsey dropped the third installment of Bullets Ain't Got No Name in his first commercial single, Hustle in the House. Although critics loved it, the song didn't make much impact on the charts. Things took a turn in 2010 when Epic Records ran into financial troubles. Nipsey decided not to renew his contract and chose to go independent. He even joined in on the song We Are the World 25 for Haiti and was featured in XXL Magazine's annual freshman top 10, a selection of rising hip-hop artists. XXL labeled him the most determined in his class, and LA Weekly hailed him as the next big LAMC. Nipsey was all set to release his debut album, South Central State of Mind, with hits like Feeling Myself featuring Lloyd. He was working with notable producers and planning joint projects with artists like J-Rock. However, both the album and these projects got postponed indefinitely. In 2010, after parting ways with Epic Records, Nipsey decided to build his own path. He founded his record label, All Money and Records. On December the 21st, 2010, he released his first All Money and Records mixtape, The Marathon, featuring guest appearances from Cocaine and Management. He followed up with a sequel, The Marathon Continues, in 2011, and he even dropped a collaborative album with Blanco called Raw in 2012. His journey continued with notable singles like Proud of That with Florida rapper Rick Ross in 2012, as well as collaborations with Maybach Music Group. In 2013, Nipsey unveiled his highly anticipated mixtape, Crenshaw. The unique twist? He sold 1,000 hard copies for 100 bucks each, and even Jay-Z bought 100 of them. By the time he dropped his first major label debut album, Victory Lap, in 2018, he had already made an indelible mark on the music industry and beyond. This album was a culmination of years of hard work and relentless dedication to his craft. Two years before the release of Victory Lap, he had gained significant attention for his protest song, FDT, short for F. Donald Trump, a collaboration with his frequent partner, YG. But Victory Lap was much more than just music. It was a partnership between his own label, All Money and Records, and Atlantic Records. The album boasted an impressive lineup of guest artists, including CeeLo Green, Puff Daddy, and West Coast luminaries like Kendrick Lamar. Nipsey's approach to releasing his debut album was not just about business, it was personal. He saw it as a reflection on his journey and the realization of his dreams. He described the album as confirmation that we followed the vision and we delivered, but it was just a glimpse into his achievements. 
He had already ventured into the world of fashion with his Marathon clothing label. It all started when fans started asking for the blue and yellow Crenshaw shirt seen in his Hustle in the House music video. Recognizing the demand, he turned this into a full-blown apparel line. In 2017, he went a step further by opening a flagship store for Marathon Clothing and a strip mall on West Slauson Avenue. But Nipsey's vision didn't stop there. In early 2019, he and business partner Dave Gross made a bold move by purchasing the entire plaza. Their plan was not only to rebuild around his store, but also to add a six-story residential building above the commercial properties. It was his way of investing in and revitalizing his community, and as he put it, pay taxes to these corners. Nipsey had a knack for creating innovative spaces. Alongside Dave Gross, he launched Vector 90 in 2018, a co-working space that served as a bridge between Silicon Valley and the inner city. It was a place where kids could take classes in science, technology, and mathematics. His goal was to expand this concept to other metropolitan areas like Atlanta, Washington, D.C., and Baltimore. But Nipsey's projects weren't limited to fashion and technology. He invested in Destination Crenshaw, an open-air museum dedicated to honoring African-American artistic achievement. He also played a role in bringing back World on Wheels, a beloved neighborhood roller rink from the 80s and 90s, envisioning it as a safe space for kids in an area often plagued by gang violence. Nipsey was a strong advocate for STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics projects, believing that there should be a narrative encouraging young people to follow the footsteps of tech giants like Elon Musk and Mark Zuckerberg. He aimed to give back in a way that was effective, especially for kids who, like him, had ambitious goals but lacked support and infrastructure. His commitment to his neighborhood was also seen in his countless acts of generosity, such as providing shoes to every student at a Hyde Park Elementary School, funding upgrades to the campus playground, and often contributing to funeral expenses for neighbors affected by gun violence. His actions went beyond music. They were about building a legacy of hope, opportunity, and positive change in the community he loved. As he once said, in our culture, there's a narrative that says, follow the athletes, follow the entertainers. And that's cool, but there should be something that says, follow Elon Musk, follow Mark Zuckerberg. I think that with me being influential as an artist and young and upcoming from the inner city, it makes sense for me to be one of the people waving that flag. Nipsey Hussle left behind a legacy that continues to inspire one that transcends music and reflects a deep commitment to the betterment of his community and the world. One of the remarkable aspects of Nipsey's legacy was his tireless effort to bridge the gap between rival gangs, actively working to broker peace. His unity with blood gang rappers like YG and The Game, despite being from the Crip affiliation, demonstrated his commitment to ending the violence that had plagued Los Angeles for years. Nipsey's vision extended beyond music and peace talks. He had a meeting scheduled with the Los Angeles Board of Police Commissioners and the city's chief of police to discuss ways of combating gang violence and helping kids escape the cycle of gang involvement. His mission was not to glamorize gangs, but to prevent other young individuals from experiencing the struggles that led him down that path. The lyrics in his songs carried messages of struggle and resilience, portraying the challenges he faced throughout his life. His lyrics resonated with the black community, encapsulating the constant battle for success. All my life been grinded all my life. Sacrifice, hustled, paid the price. Want a slice? Gotta roll the dice. But on March the 31st, 2019, Tragedy struck as Nipsey Hussle was shot at least 10 times in the parking lot of his store, Marathon Clothing, located in South Central Los Angeles. The incident occurred at approximately 3.18 p.m., sending shockwaves through his community and the music industry as a whole. The attack was not only brutal, but also senseless, as it took place right outside a business that he had established to give back to the very neighborhood that had shaped his life and career. The assailant went so far as to kick Nipsey Hussle in the head, compounding the brutality of the shooting. Nipsey's tragic death once again refreshes the recurring narrative in the black community. Prominent black leaders who strive to make a difference often meet untimely ends. The names of Martin Luther King Jr., Malcolm X, Fred Hampton, and Tupac come to mind. His passing felt like a loss in a game where, no matter how much progress is made, it always feels like a step backwards. The pain is deep because Nipsey Hussle was more than just talk. He gave back to his community, inspired others, and provided the tools for change. He was not about empty promises or hidden agendas. He was about making a tangible difference. Nipsey was committed to the idea of all money in, no money out, keeping financial resources within the black community. He believed in the potential of himself and his people. He didn't just talk about change. He worked towards it. The tragedy becomes even more poignant when you realize that he died in the same parking lot where he once sold CDs out of the trunk of his car. It was the same parking lot where he opened a co-working space and STEM center named Vector 90, a place that aimed to provide opportunities and resources to a community often lacking them. The pain is exasperated because he passed away outside the strip mall where he owned a barbershop and a fish market providing access to healthy food options in an underserved area. 
Together with David Gross, he invested millions to purchase the plaza with the intention of buying back the block and creating a space where black-owned businesses could thrive. Nipsey Hussle had a grand vision to build generational wealth for his community. He saw his duty not just as an artist, but as a champion for the people he represented. He wrote, I have a duty to justify the seat that I'm sitting in. Nobody has any success on his own. This is why people love Nipsey Hussle. His actions spoke volumes, and his love for his community as well as his relationship with Lauren London endeared him to us all. His legacy is not just about music. It's about hope, change, and the potential for a brighter future.